Hey, welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, we're gonna take a look at setting up the Pi Zero. Stick around and we'll get right to it. A big shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Okay, so I've never really gone over how to get uh, the operating system installed on the Pi. And I am going to start from that point in this particular project because uh, with the Pi Zero, it is quite a bit different. Now, let me say that uh, everything in this video will also apply to a Raspberry Pi 3 or 4 if you want to set it up uh, headless right off the bat. So let's go ahead and jump over to the computer and get started. So the very first thing we're going to need to do is head over to raspberrypi.org and we're going to get uh, the software or the operating system downloaded that we need. So I'm going to just click right here on downloads. And then we're going to come down to Raspberry Pi OS. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And we're going to scroll down. Now, normally, we would download one of these first two versions. Uh, this is the one that I typically recommend. It just has the desktop. This one here has everything uh, included with it. So, not only the full GUI interface, but a lot of extra software is included as well. However, working with the Pi Zero, we can't really use either one of these. It's possible to get them running on there but it is excruciatingly slow. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down here to the light version. And I have already gone ahead and downloaded this, but you will need to download uh, either the zip file or the torrent, whichever you prefer. And then once you get it onto your system, go ahead and unzip the file. One other tool that we are going to need in order to get the operating system onto the SD card is called Bellina Etcher, or just Etcher. So they make this for uh, both Windows and Mac. I'm running mine on a Mac, but you do need to get this downloaded and installed as well. Once you've got that, uh, the, the image downloaded and Bellina Etcher installed, go ahead and fire it up and you will see a window that looks like this. I'm going to click select the image and I am looking for that light image that I downloaded. So you can see here the Buster light. So I'm going to select that, go ahead and click open. The next thing we need to do is we need to select the drive that we're working with. So I'll click select drive and it pulls up in my particular case a couple of different hard drives. This is a external hard drive. You can see that it's a two terabyte drive. That is not the one we want. The other one here is the SD card uh, reader media, and it's roughly 32 gigs. That's the one we want to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose that one and click continue. Last thing we need to do is hit the flash button. Now, if you're working with a Mac, it's going to ask you for your Mac password. I'll go ahead and enter that now, and then we'll give this a few minutes to flash. You can see it's starting right here. Once it gets completely flashed, it will go back and validate the image. Now, once you're done, or once uh, Etcher is done, don't uh, eject the SD card immediately. We're gonna do a couple of things to that SD card before we boot the Pi. And after it finishes up the validation, you should get a screen like this that tells you that the flash has been complete. So at this point, we can just go ahead and close Etcher down, and we need to open up our file browser. Uh, so on the Mac, I'm just going to go ahead and open Finder, or you could open, uh, I believe it's Windows Explorer on the Windows side. And I'm going to scroll down and look for a drive called Boot. Go ahead and click on that and you should be presented with a bunch of files that look similar to this. Now we need to create two different files in this so that the first time we boot it up we're going to have SSH enabled and 
it's going to go ahead and attach itself to our Wi-Fi network. This way, we never have to plug anything into the Pi Zero except for power. And again, guys, this could be applied to the Pi 3 or the Pi 4 as well, even if you're running a full-blown desktop environment. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click and say New File. It's going to ask me what the file name is, and I just want it to be SSH. Now, one thing uh, my system does is it always appends this .txt on there. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, whoops, wrong key, uh, SSH, and I'm going to remove that .txt so that it's just plain SSH. That's it. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to create a WPA underscore supplicant dot comp file. So let's go ahead and open that up and take a look at it at this. Now, we'll leave uh, a copy of this down in the description below of this video. If you use my version of it, you need to make two changes before you copy it over to the micro SD card. The first change is going to be right here and you need to put the name of your network. So whatever the SSID is of your wireless network goes here. The next line right below it is where you will key in the password. So once you've got those two pieces of information in this file, go ahead and save it, and then you're going to copy that to the micro SD card. Now, just in case anybody's wondering, and do not put this in this file, but uh, if you can't see it on the screen very well, it's WPA underscore supplicant dot C-O-N-F. And let me just make that a bit bigger for us so we can kind of get a good idea of that. But this is the name of the file here. Again, don't include this in this particular file. I just did it here so you could see it a little better. This up here is the only information you want to include in the file. Okay, so after you have created that file and saved it, I'm just going to go ahead and drop it right over here onto uh, this boot drive. And you can see it right there, the WPA underscore supplicant and then my other file of SSH. Now, that's the only two things we need to do to get this up and running. So I'm going to go ahead and eject the SD card from my Mac, load it into the Pi Zero, and the only thing I'm going to do there after I get the card loaded is apply power. Okay, once the Raspberry Pi has had a chance to boot up, you're going to need to go into your home router and find the IP address that's been assigned to the Raspberry Pi. Now, I can't give you pointers on your particular router, so you may need to do a YouTube search uh, and figure out how to find the DHCP list or DHCP leases uh, inside your particular router. But I am in my router currently, and you'll see that uh, this is my DHCP leases. Now, very first one on the list just says Raspberry Pi. That is the one I'm looking for. By default, uh, the Raspberry Pi is named Raspberry Pi. So it should be fairly easy to spot on your home router. Now, this is the IP address that the Pi has been assigned. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And the next thing I'm going to do is head over to the terminal window. Now, if you're on Linux, you could use Linux uh, terminal window to do the same thing. If you're on Windows, I believe you can do this from the command line. I know that there's a free application for Windows called Putty that will allow you to uh, SSH into different machines as well. So depending on the operating system, uh, you'll have to figure out what you want to use for SSH. From the Mac, I'm simply going to say SSH. I'm going to give it the username, which is still default of Pi, at, and then I'm going to paste in that IP address that we copied just a second ago. It's going to ask me for the password. The default here is Raspberry until you change it. 
and that's it. We are into the Raspberry Pi. Now, uh, I did clear that screen kind of quick, but it will give you a warning that you do need to change the default password, and you'll want to go ahead and update and upgrade the system. So, uh, if you've been following the channel for a while, you'll know the standard commands are sudo apt-get update, and I would go ahead and run that. When that one finishes, it would be the same thing except it's called upgrade. Now, one last thing you might want to see here is how you can change uh, some of the information. If you do sudo raspy hyphen config and go ahead and hit return, you'll be presented with this information here. This gives you the option to be able to change passwords and change other options that you might need to um, before continuing with the Pi Zero project. And then uh, in this, you can't use a mouse or anything to get around. You do have to use your tab key or your up and down arrows along with your enter key to be able to move around inside this screen. All right, guys, I hope that helps you get up and running with your Raspberry Pi. We'll see you on the next video. Until then, 7-3.